Hello guys, in this video I'm going to be teaching you how to camera track in Blender 2.8. Now this was actually supposed to be a full video but I'm going to be breaking it into two parts. Uh, in relation to what I said about the uh, video that I recently posted about uh, the camera tracking and the animation notes. So I'm going to make a separate video for the camera tracking and a separate video for the animation notes. And uh, yeah, hopefully you guys can learn from that and know how I actually did the uh, recent video that I posted. So let's get started. Open up your Blender and uh, you get a splash screen. Of course, you just let's get rid of the splash screen by clicking on it. And uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to take this cube and this lamp over here and we're going to delete only those. We're going to leave the camera in there like that. We're not going to do anything to it. We're not going to delete it or anything like that. So let's get over here and let's click on this tab and go over into the video sequencer no sorry the movie clip editor so go into the movie clip editor by clicking on that let me just uh, see if i can hold on let me just do this real quick so don't do what i'm doing right now i'm just enabling this for you guys real quick all right so just go into your movie clip editor and okay so i think that only shows up in 3d viewpoint so just go over into your movie clip editor and now we're going to add in the uh, video footage. In this case, in my in my case, it's going to be a series of images that I actually created from the video that I shot. So in Blender, you might want to be working with uh, sequences of images, not actually uh, an actual footage. I mean, that can work, but it would be best to actually work with series of the sequences or series of images instead of an actual video footage so if you have a video just import it into blender the video sequence editor here the video sequencer and then just render it out as images hopefully you guys know how to do that and uh let's get on with this so when you have your video movie clip editor opened just look up here and click on open click on the open and load in your image sequence so in my case it's on my desktop in my transform folder and in my image sequence so I want to take the first 300 images so you can see I have one selected here so I'm gonna go all the way down to 300 which should be around here and I'm gonna hold down control and shift and I'm gonna click I'm, I'm gonna click on 300 like this so you can see it selects all that images for us just like that and I'll click on open clip and that should add it in for you like this so just move on up here just raise this bar over here. just raise it up a little bit this area over here just move your mouse over here and then once it the cursor changes just pull it up and make it a little bit more bigger so you can see the timeline and then change the end value to 300 now before we actually do anything else i want you guys to open your preferences again that will not be visible in here so i'm just going to be narrating this to you guys so you can uh, go through what i'm doing on your pc so Open up your preferences and go under the, uh, is it system? I think it's system. It's, uh, hold on. <clears throat> Sorry. I think it's under system. Yeah. Yeah. So go under system, under the sequence, um, I mean the system tab under the, uh, preferences. You should find a sequencer cache limit and then, uh, change this to about half of your memory. So this actually determines how much image can be cached into your memory uh, while you work with the video sequencer. So maybe if you type in 4000, 4000 is equivalent to 4 gigabytes and <clears throat> uh, 5000, 5 gigabytes and that other. So I have 16 gigabytes of RAM, so I'm just using 5000 right now. I don't want to go beyond 5000, but you can go with about half of your total memory, your RAM uh, in there. So. Just type that in and then click on save user settings and then close your preferences. Now let's get on with this. So after you've done that, what you want to do next is you want to prefetch your video footages, that the, the images you've loaded in. So that is when the sequencer cache comes in. So this is when your memory, the memory, the amount of memory you typed in there comes in. So if your video is actually long, you, you end up not having the whole thing being cached, I mean prefetched into your memory and uh, you end up experiencing some slow uh editing processes while you do this so in my case 5000 was enough for me so i'm just going to press n and then bring this menu up so we have two menus this on the side here and this one over here just press n to bring this one up all right so what we're going to do now is we're going to track the images here i mean the 
video here which is of, of course is a sequence of images we're going to track it from beginning to end so before i actually do this i want to move my mouse up here and i'm going to left click and then drag it down just a little bit so i have this side just showing up a little bit like this and i'm going to click on a clip here is a clip yeah and i'm going to change it to graph so i want to change that to graph and i'm going to zoom out until I have the whole thing from 1 to 300 showing over here. So this is going to show us how the uh, track, the uh, tracker we place is actually being tracked. It draws a graph for us to tell us how well our tracker is being tracked in on I mean in the video. So here's what we're going to do. Now that we have everything we need to actually begin this, let's go in here. We're going to place eight trackers from beginning to the end. You can go beyond eight trackers, but I usually go with eight trackers exactly that is the exact amount you need the least amount you need to be able to track your footage so anything below eight won't work anything above eight will work but you might get some real bad results but if it works better you have everything to be perfect it, it will even work much much better than the eight trackers so, so let's get started with this so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to find a very high contrasted area in our case it should be black now this is a pavement so I didn't have to put any trackers inside the uh, footage to get this to look great I mean to get this to track right so what I'm gonna do is let's find a perfect place so let's see I think this is a very good contrasted area here so I'm gonna hold down control and I'm gonna left click on my mouse like this and uh, let's bring this down is it no track so click move your mouse over here and then click on the track tab over here to bring this up so you can see the zoomed uh, image of, of the tracker you've placed here so you can see where our tracker has been placed right now over here now what I'm going to do next is to try to position it even better by pressing G and then moving the mouse to place it about the center of where I want this to be now before we actually track this let's go under the track settings here okay and then over here in the tracking settings extra you want to click on that open up the menu and then on the margin you want to increase this to something like five okay so what this does is as you track the video and then this maybe this point that you're tracking starts to go beyond I mean beyond the uh, edge of the image we have going on what it does is as it gets over here say from here to here it's about five margin so once it gets here before it actually reaches the end of the uh, image here it stops tracking the point so that prevents it from sliding along the edge, which it does sometimes if you don't uh, set this up. So yeah, let's get to this. Now, we place the first tracker on this point over here. All right. So we're going to track the video. I mean, we're going to track this. We're going to track this from beginning to the end. That is if it's possible. So let's hopefully you have your tracker placed right there. Now, what we're going to do next is I um, I'm going to go down here another track over here. I'm going to click on this to bring down the menu and I want to click right here okay the one before this that is this one right here the one that points the arrow to the right we're going to be tracking to the right hand side that that's what that means so just click on that and then it start tracking and then you can see it gets here so this is our graph right here so you can see it start tracking all the way to here and then it stops at the uh, frame 100 so if we go back you can see this is on frame 100 it tracked a little bit better but it shifted just by some slight uh, distance but it's kind of accurate so we can go with that so at frame 100 it actually gets missing but you can st still see we still have the point inside the footage so what we're going to do next is we're going to go into the next frame where it actually lost the uh, point and then we're going to press g and move the tracker down to that area again like this okay and we're going to track it forward again like that and you can see it gets lost at frame 221 so let's go back and see how this looks all right so this is going very well now i'm going to press g again and i want to track this i mean i'm going to move this to this point again and i want to track all the way to the end i'm pretty sure this time it went all the way to the end as you can see so yeah so that worked quite nicely so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to go back to the beginning of the footage by pressing on this button right here moving it to the beginning and I'm gonna press L on my keyboard to lock on this tracker all right so we're gonna see how this actually tracked throughout the whole footage so just press L to lock on this tracker and then press shift and space to play the animation so we're gonna see how well it moved through the video make sure we don't have anything to correct in it 
So you can see there's some slight movements over here, but it's not not it's nothing major. We can actually go with this. It's nothing really major. Alright, so this is a, a good track, not a perfect one, but it's quite close to perfect. You can even make it much more perfect by tweaking stuff and all that. But let's just move on to the next tracker. So we want to place eight of these trackers in this video. So the next tracker, we're going to find another point, another very high contrasted point to place the next tracker. So let's let's take a look. Say maybe this side, all right? This point right here. So it's, it's a good point. So let's put a tracker there like that. And I'm going to track this forward. So you can see it gets here and then gets lost. So I want to go to the frame where it gets lost and I'm going to press G and move it to that point again and then track it forward. It gets lost right there again, like that. So I'm going to move it again, move it onto that point and then track it forward. It gets lost over here, press G, move it onto that point, track it forward, it gets lost over here. And finally we're going to press G. First off, let me just move back. You can see this one moves off a little bit. So I'm going to press G and I'm going to move it to this point instead. And I want to track it forward. And that tracks all the way to the end. So again, we can press L and then press Shift and Space to see how well this tracked all the way through. Alright, so yeah, there's some shakes in it, but you can actually tweak that and find even better points to place this on. So for now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep this for the sake of a tutorial, so I'm not going to be making it too perfect. But hopefully you get the idea of what I'm trying to do here. So let me just save this over real quick before we actually continue this. So I'm going to save it on uh, Drive D. My Drive D, Blender stuff. Uh, tutorial files. I want to save it as a transform. Oh no, camera tracking tutorial. Camera tracking tutorial. Like that. I want to save that over. Alright. So, what I'm going to do next is I am going to find another point to track. Like I said, we need eight of these trackers all over the footage. So, the next one I think should be. Let me see. This one looks like a good tracking point. I mean, okay, well, let's ignore that one. It's too, it's spreading out too much. You can see it's too long, so we cannot go with that. Let's find something else. Maybe the end of this thread over here. Let's try that one. So I'm going to track it forward. And that tracks all the way to here and gets missing. So I'm going to place it on it manually on the next frame, on the frame in which it gets missing. I want to track forward again. All right. So there, and I'm going to do that again. Track it forward. It gets here and gets lost. I'm going to keep doing that all the way to the end, like that. Gets lost over here. Press G, move it over it. Track forward. Again, it gets lost over here. Move it all the way and track forward. And that goes all the way to the end. So that's a good one. Alright. So that's why I'm going to save that one. Now we're going to find another point to track again. And hopefully, let me see. Which one are we going to track? Which one are we going to track? Let's go all the way to the end so I can see this much better. Alright. Maybe this one right here. So let's place a marker right there. Now this time we're going to be tracking backwards, not forward, because you can see we are on the last frame of the video. So we're going to be tracking backwards. So this this is the icon we're going to be clicking on. Just click on that one and then track backwards. So it tracks all the way to this point and then gets lost. All right. So we're going to manually place it again. And again, we're going to track backwards. It gets over here and gets lost. Sorry. So we're going to place it on it again just like that I want to track backwards again and that goes all the way to the beginning so we're going to lock on it by pressing L and I want to press shift and space to see how this tracks through <coughs> all 
Alright, so I could say this is the most perfect we've tracked we've tracked so far. And uh Let's move on to the next one. So this is pretty much what we're gonna be doing until we have about eight trackers or more on the footage, and uh, and then we can solve this. So what I'm gonna do is I might actually time lapse the rest of the tracker placing and. Uh, Alright, once you have all 8 trackers placed, it's on to the next thing to actually solve these trackers. So, first of all, if you take a look up here, you might notice that the uh, the uh, graph looks a little bit um, <coughs> spread out. And if you end up having a, a uh, spread out um, graph up here, it doesn't necessarily mean... Uh, what I'm trying to say here is don't... Uh, think you are going for something that should be uh, pretty much aligned in the same line like you're not going for something that should draw a line that is pretty much straight like every single tracker should have should be on the same exact line this is as a result of the fact that um, the trackers are, are different distances away from the camera right so it's like you have someone standing about a meter away from you and another person standing about 20 meters away from you so if the person that is about a meter away from you should take about three steps across you you might have to turn your head around completely to actually look at their movement but if the person that is about uh, 20 meters away from you should take about three steps you might not have to you you won't even end up moving your head to track the movement of this person because he's far away enough to for you to be able to see everything so that that's sort of like the concept behind it okay so this track is sort of further away from the camera than the this one over here so you can see this one is actually having a graph that is um on top of this one's graph okay so when you take a look at the graph of this one which is pretty much the closest to the camera right now you can see it's the one at the lowest of this or maybe it looks like it's at the lowest of this but if you take a look at this one here you can see it's on top all right so that's pretty much what it is <coughs> all right so what we're going to do next is we're going to solve this camera <coughs> sorry we're going to solve this camera motion next so what we're going to do is we're going to go down to we're going to go over here and we're going to click on the solve tab over here to get into the solve section all right so the first thing we see is the the uh, keyframe one keyframe b I mean keyframe A, keyframe B, all right? We also have tripod here. Now, this is a, a different thing, like a tripod, when you're tracking a video that, uh, for example, you're just uh, <clears throat> rotating the camera around, okay? So you're not moving. You're just rotating the camera around. You might want to enable tripod because if you solve the video, the trackers, without the tripod enabled, you might get an error, which I've encountered a lot of times in Blender. So... If you have a video where you are only rotating your camera, you might want to enable tripod, right? But let's move on to the next thing. Let's ignore this one for now. Let's move on to the keyframe here. Now, this one you want to set it. You might want to leave it at default if you don't know what it is, or you can just set it up to places where you you actually suspect the um, the graph. The, I mean the graphs that you have here if you suspect an area where the graphs are actually moving too much apart like for example if you take a look at here we have maybe from 160 to uh, maybe 190 you can see it spreads out too much so you can set that distance over here so maybe 160 to 190 and then it, it you know kind of helps with the solving of the whole trackers in the uh, video so the next thing we're going to do now is we're going to take all the uh, I'm just going to leave this at default, alright? I'm not going to do anything with it. I've never actually changed it before. So, I always leave it at the default. So, what we're going to do next is we're going to keep this then there. And then we're going to take all of the trackers. You don't need to select it all. As long as it, it's there, it will work. So, what we're going to do next is we're going to click on the solve camera motion, alright? So, let's hope this works. So, 
you can see what is happening right now this is going we're, get, we're getting a uh, a solve error of 40.2244 now this is very bad so let me just press ctrl and z to undo this and what i'm going to do is um i'm going to change some settings over here i'm going to go over here into the tracking no the camera settings oh no the lens instead all right and i want to change the focal lens to something like 35 all right like that and let's solve this again and see what we get so again 0 0.6 all right this is a very good solve error 0 0.6 is very good so if you're getting something below one then you are doing something great all right you tracked very nicely you don't have any problem with your tracking or maybe you do have a problem i mean that's why the 0 0.6 is over there all right and there's no way you're going to hit zero i mean there's no way you're going to hit zero at all because there's always a solve error you'll always get a solve error but just make sure you don't get a solve error of more than one or maybe more than two you could go with maybe 1.5 but it shouldn't be more than two if you get something like 1.5 you will notice your object is shaking in the footage just a little bit not too much but you will notice it's shaking just a little bit in your footage so something below one is always the best so now that we've got something with uh, some, uh, i mean now that we've got 0 0.6203 that's actually a good solve error a really good one so what we're going to do next is we're going to set up this uh tracking scene into the uh 3d space so let's go over here so as i was saying before we actually before we actually move on as i was saying you can add more trackers in this footage okay so adding more trackers might end up reducing your solve error that is if you track them perfectly it might end up reducing your solve error which means more or better tracking uh, results but if you if you don't track them properly and you keep adding in more trackers then what you're doing is you're adding in more error right so you end up deleting some of them to actually reduce the error so the more track the more trackers you add in the more error or the more perfect um, should i say perfectness or something like that so hopefully you get what i'm trying to say here so it's all up to you but i usually go with a trackers solid i don't go beyond a trackers i don't go below a trackers all right so what we're going to do next is to set up the tracking scene so what we're going to do is get over here right so we're going to choose three of the trackers here to set as the floor so to take a look at this we're going to take uh one let me see we're going to take one uh let me see let me take one two three all right and i want to set that as the floor all right so that is the floor and first of all let's split this view again and i want to change this to the 3d viewport all right so that is our floor I go into viewport you can see this is all flow over here right so before you continue I'm just gonna click on set as background so I can see the background in the camera right here so you can see the reason why I did not delete the camera in case you deleted it by um, mistake if you try doing all of these stuff you won't actually get a result until you add in a camera in the 3d viewport yeah so what we're gonna do next so we just set the floor by selecting these three and clicking on floor and all we're going to do is we're going to take this one and set the origin all right so it's going to move the origin point to that tracker for us all right so that is our origin point and then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take this is our origin point so we're going to take this one okay if this is our origin point and we're taking this i want to set it as a y axis now what it's going to do is it's going to take the origin point and then this tracker here and it's going to draw a straight line through it all right so that straight line is going to act as our um, y axis okay that is what it does so in case you see you can see right here the y axis is not that accurate so what we're going to do is we want to try using other trackers so let's go with this let's set this at the as the x axis and let's see how that looks okay so that is actually much better so you can see that makes the y axis even straight for us as you can see right there so just try to mess around with the uh, positioning until you have something close to perfect it won't be perfect because the trackers are not exactly you know you won't sometimes you won't get them to be in straight line with each other but if you happen to have one in straight line with the other then you're good to go so what we're going to do next is to set the scale all right so hopefully when you took your footage you knew maybe for example from this point to that point is about a meter or from this point to that point is about two meters all right so maybe you know that so in my case i could take this and this to be about a meter long all right so i'm going to take those two and i'm going to keep this at one but if it's two you want to type in two all right that is with two meters so mine i'm going to take it as 1.5 no 1.2 all right and i want to click on set scale all right just like that so there we go 
Now that is the final thing we're going to do. And now what we're going to do now is to click on setup tracking scene. All right, so when you click on that, it adds in a plane for you, which is going to act as the shadow catcher. And it also adds in an object, which you can actually use to um, test your tracking. And also it adds in a light, which we do not need. So we're going to delete that. All right, so now we can move this above the uh, plane to sit right on top of it like this, just like that. And I'm going to go into our 3D viewport and let's play this video and see how that looks. So playing the video, you can see it's running at four. I mean, a low FPS because um, there's a lot going on, a lot of calculations going on. All right, so let's just give it some time to play through. I'm sure once it plays through, when it starts again, it will run even smoother. All right, so this didn't actually work out as planned. You can see it's still playing at a lower FPS, but this is actually the track the tracking that we were expecting to get. All right, so basically. You had the same, I mean, hopefully you had the same result. Uh, what I'm going to do now is, I actually wanted to continue this video, but like I said, it's going to be in two parts. The second part, I'm going to be placing the vehicle here in this footage. And then um, I'm going to be transforming it the way that I did in my video. So you guys can uh, know how I did it and maybe apply it in your videos as well. So yeah, pretty much this is where I'll end the first video. But hopefully you had the same result, as I'm saying. And yeah. I'll see you guys in the next video.